Hello, welcome to this SUSECon 2020 session on managing Linux in the clouds with SUSE Manager. My name is Don Vosberg. And I'm Neil Bornstein. Thanks, Neil. Uh, and together we're going to help you learn how to manage your Linux instances in uh, the hyperscalers in particular this time. So uh, with no further ado, Neil, take it from here. So why would you want to run SUSE Manager in the cloud? Well, as all of you, I'm sure, are experiencing, more and more workloads are moving to the clouds. So when you have your, your virtual machines running in the cloud, you need to do things like scheduling updates and patches in the cloud just like you do on-premise. Those things don't change just because of where you're running. In fact, your security exposures can be even higher in the clouds, depending how you set things up with virtual private clouds and things like that. And the good news is SUSE Manager can run in the cloud. In fact, it runs very well in the cloud and manage those cloud workloads. Uh, in fact, it can manage cloud and on-premise workloads from the cloud or from on-premise or crossing over various hybrid scenarios. Uh, now, bear in mind that data transit charges may apply when you're crossing between different clouds. And of course, SUSE Manager can manage more than just SLES. We can manage Red Hat, CentOS, and Ubuntu as well. And Oracle Linux is coming. So what can we deliver in the cloud? Well, everything that SUSE Manager does on-premise, it can do in the cloud as well. We'll be showing it today running in uh, Amazon uh, AWS EC2 uh, with a live demo. And then we'll be showing some screenshots from Azure and Google Cloud Platform. And SUSE Manager, of course, uh, delivers IT infrastructure management across the cloud. So again, on-premise or in various cloud service providers. And what it gives you is visibility and flexibility in content delivery to your managed instances and a lot more. And we'll show some of the more as we get toward the end of the presentation. It gets really exciting with some of the new functionality that SUSE Manager has. What's common across cloud providers? So uh, obviously you have uh, a very uh, front end uh, for uh, managing the VMs. Uh, they all give you a command line and they all give you some t form of RESTful API, although they each have their own spin on it and flavor of it. Um, they all give you marketplace SUSE Manager instance images. So if you want to build SUSE Manager, you don't start with SLES, you don't bring your own built VM and then somehow try to migrate it to the cloud. You start from the cloud marketplace with SUSE Manager images that are actually built by and maintained by a team of technical resource persons for cloud here at SUSE. Um, you can, uh, you need to be aware that uh, if you clone something, so if you build a SUSE Manager once, You'll need to reset that machine ID so you don't end up having duplicates of the same box. Um, there are some differences between uh, BYOS or bring your own subscription, which is what most of the SUSE Manager portfolio today, in fact, all of it is BYOS. So you have to start with a subscription that you have for SUSE Manager server and proxy. Now, uh, the managed instances in the public cloud providers, all of them, uh, you can manage either BYOS or on-demand instances. So uh, any of them, anything running in the cloud can be managed by SUSE Manager. That's kind of the bottom line. Um, you, you do need to set a static host name. Uh, as you may or may not be aware, if you've used hyperscalers before, they give you this uh, gigantically long uh, DNS that uh, is assigned to it by a DHCP server, and it looks like heck, and uh, SUSE Manager can't sort that out. It causes issues in part because it's too long, also because you want your clients to be able to resolve to it. So you'll need to set a static host name. This is common across all the cloud providers. Um, and then you'll need to add an additional storage volume. So the default boot disk on the image is only designed to hold the, the operating system or system portion of SUSE Manager. 
and the additional storage is necessary from for all the cloud providers to add one storage disk that then gets uh, assigned to the appropriate pieces with a SUMA storage script that is uh, there in all the providers. And then, of course, you can set up with YAST, just like you might uh, on-prem. There's some really good docs on how to do that. And we treat all the managed systems as equal, uh, for good or for bad. Uh, as far as uh, SUSE is concerned, we don't deal with registration across those clouds, but we can deliver content and management and all the things that SUSE Manager is great for. And we don't care whether it's BYOS or on-demand. We don't care whether it's a really tiny instance in the cloud or a really huge uh, on a clustered machine in, or a reserved instance in Azure. Um, all of them are treated similarly. So uh, the instructions are here on doing on-demand instances. It is some exercise. So regardless of where you are using on-demand instances, um, to be managed in SUSE Manager, you have to remove the repositories that already exist on the box and be able to connect to SUSE Manager. There's very specific instructions in the link here. We're not going to go into that deeply. Another thing that's common across all the clouds is that the default organization is already predefined on the image we distribute. So when you start out your SUSE Manager box, there's already an admin user. There's already an organization called Organization with an S. So those of you in EMEA, that's how you spell organization. In uh, the Americas, we typically use a Z in there. But you'll have to rename that. Uh, but it's already predefined on the cloud instances. There are reasons for that. But um, that's how it's built in the in the cloud image. You have to remember that. You want to rename that so um, going forward it can have some meaning within your own organization. So um, Amazon EC2 is the first cloud that we'll discuss a bit. What's different about Amazon EC2? Uh, uh, you have what are called availability zones and uh, pretty good visibility and infrastructure across availability zones within Amazon. Um, and that is a dynamic uh, set of data centers, essentially, that Amazon operates from. And you get to build your system within an availability zone, and that network setup is, in fact, assigned to that uh, EC2. Or, or availability zone. Um, and, and the network setup is somewhat separate from instance setup, although they have done some really nice things with the dashboard recently to reintegrate that. Of course, storage options are going to be a bit different. Uh, you, when you size in uh, EC2, you don't get to see how much it's going to cost. Uh, <laughs> you'll find that out at the end of the month, which is sometimes great sometimes uh, scary, right? Uh, and then, of course, Amazon has their own uh, native management tools. There's an Amazon management server. There's a place to create um, registries for containers. There's all kind of different uh, management tools, both from the web UI and from the CLI, available from Amazon. Uh, so here's how it looks when you choose an AMI. I'm not going to talk about that uh, deeply because we are actually going to uh, build it with a demo. We're going to build a SUSE Manager 4 server in Amazon AWS. You'll notice that I'm in the Amazon EC2 console, and this is the dashboard that is their current offering. You can either do, do it from here or go down to instances and launch, in, launch an instance there as well. So I'm going to select this link right in the, in the middle that says launch instance. SUSE provides um, AMIs or Amazon machine images for SUSE Manager. I'm going to search 
for that by first narrowing it to only be SUSE provided elements here. And I'm going to search for SUSE dash manager. And I'm going to pick the version number also four. So when I do that, I see both current instances of SUSE manager four and some previously built ones. I also see a combination of both server and proxy. And what I want to find is the server one. And this version number here is the date. So here I found the SUSE manager server from uh, February the 26th. I'm going to select and build that. When you go to build your images, make sure you select the newest one, unless you have a very good reason for going back to some of these older builds. <clears throat> We're going to apply updates uh, subsequent to the wire build anyway, so I don't really care. So once I've selected my image, now I have to choose an instance type. Highly recommended for SUSE Manager is to choose a memory optimized instance. <clears throat> so um, they have, uh, an, it's a newer family, and these are actually built uh, to run on KVM as opposed to the older Amazon XCN. So I'm going to select one of these memory optimized versions. For my demo, since I'll have a limited number of systems, I'm going to choose two vCPUs and 16 gig of memory. In a minimum production, you would pick four vCPUs and 32 gig of memory. Now I'm going to configure a bit more details of my system. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that um, these networking uh, settings are region specific. So I happen to be in US East 2. And within that, I have a virtual private cloud that's built uh, that we, we built for expert days in the past. And I'm going to reuse that. That creates some, um, uh, within the VPC, it creates some subnetting and, and other network settings. <clears throat> now I'm going to add, uh, set up my storage. Initially, the SUSE Manager server image, or the the, Im the uh, instance type that I have, uh, has only a 10 gig root. I'm going to change that to be 50, and I can leave the volume type the same. I'm going to add a new volume, and I'm not going to uh, make any changes to uh, the device or the type here. I'm going to change the size of this, however, to be 500 gig. I want this to be where I store my database and the downloaded packages that I'm uh, building out in my SUSE Manager server. There's a storage script that can handle that in the actual SUSE Manager setup once the instance is done. Next, I want to add tags. At a minimum, I need to add a name tag. So this blue link in the center of the screen allows me to add a name tag. And I'm going to put my own initials in here. And you can see I've I've used this before, so I have I have a, a set already there. I'm gonna make this version six of my SUSECon uh, SUSE Manager server, <clears throat> and it adds these tags to everything that I'm I'm adding into Amazon. So next, I want to configure a security group. This is important because it's Amazon's version of the firewall. I already have an existing security group. Uh, set up with all of the ports for SUSE Manager. So you'll find these ports uh, that are necessary in the documentation for SUSE Manager and uh, a few others that I customized just from my own environment. So I have a, uh, you can see this is the, the ports for SALT. This is for HTTPS. I want to be able to SSH in from, from my management server. Uh, a number of things that you may do here in your ports. If you do create a new security group, you will have to start from scratch and it will give it uh, an oddball name that uh, says launch wizard dash whatever. So I'm going to take this one that I've built. Now it gives me my summary of everything it's going to, to build, including all the ports that are open. When I click on launch, 
Now my authentication or security needs to be adjusted so that I can get into this system once it's built. I choose an existing key pair that I already have in place uh, with my initials in it. And you may have some other ones or you can build an additional, additional uh, key pair if you wish to be able to remotely access the machine. Once that's in place, I click on launch instances and a few minutes later, I'm all ready. So let's talk about what's different in Azure. So uh, in, uh, in Azure, unlike uh, Amazon, with uh, the sizes of your instances, uh, there are prices listed when you select, uh, when, you, when you make your choice as to what uh, instance size you pick. The pricing is listed, so you can get a pretty good idea of how much you're going to spend uh, from the beginning. Uh, networking setup is a little different from Amazon. It's, you know, it, it should be uh, easy enough to, to figure out how to do, but just make sure that you're, you're uh, setting up your uh, network security groups properly, and we'll go through that in a couple of screenshots as we go through here. Another difference is that Azure gives you options for uh, solid state and spinning disks in the cloud. They have premium uh, solid states as well as standard solid state and standard spinning disks. So you'll want to make sure you pick the right kind of disk for the kind of performance that you need. Uh, the next difference would really be the underlying hypervisor. Azure, of course, is running Microsoft Hyper-V under the covers, uh, whereas Amazon is running uh, Zen, or so we think. It's hard to tell because they don't really publish is, that. Well, yeah, and it is uh, until you see the five in your designation of sizing in Amazon, and those are actually KBM. That's right. And then, of course, Azure has its own set of native management tools uh, that you can access through the Azure portals uh, as well as through the command line interfaces. So those are the main differences. And let's take a look at a couple of uh, slides. So the first thing you'll do, uh, similar to what you did in, uh, in uh, Amazon, is you'll pick which image you want to start with. So there's a SUSE Manager 4 image. And when you search for images, you'll see uh, again, you'll see the proxies, less like you did uh, in Amazon, and you want to bring your own subscription model. This is the screen that shows you picking the storage. So we've picked premium SSD for our storage here, and you can see the various sizes and uh, the performance characteristics of, of each type of storage here. So you'll want to pick the appropriate storage, and then the networking setup. So as you go through the creation of the virtual machine, you have, uh, you have buttons you can click on and uh, uh, do the, the, the network setup. So you'll want to go ahead and um, do the network setup and go to the next slide and we'll see that. Yeah, and on here, I think you need to click on advanced in order to select the right network security group. Um, right. Because by default, it will just fill it in, right? And those network yeah. security groups, very much like Amazon, are defined in the region. Exactly. And then here's an example of what the network security group looks like. So you'll want to make sure you have all the right ports open so that uh, SALT can communicate and that your, uh, uh, your SSH port is open and things like that. And, yeah, it's, and it's, I don't know if on this slide if I had any of the monitoring stuff in there, but probably not. But... No, we can, we can at least you know up. where to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so that's Azure in a nutshell. So let's look at Google Cloud Platform or GCP. So again, there's some things that are different there. Um, it has its own native management tools in GCP, uh, a tool called Stackdriver. Um, otherwise, you know, the, the adoption of uh, GCP has not been as high as EC2 or Azure. Um, in general, I think, uh, but specifically with Susan Manager. So this is an opportunity for you to uh, to learn and set the precedence for how things should be done. Blaze the images the trail. are blaze the blaze trail. the trail. Yeah. The images are out there. Uh, so you'll again, you know, just like with the other CSPs, you'll you'll type in Susan Manager in their uh, marketplace, and you'll see uh, both the proxy and the server uh, images are out there. So of course, you'll want to pick the the server, and We'll see uh, information about uh, about the uh, about the, the image, image that you're using, itself, yeah. and then 
in, uh, in GCP, every setting is in one big screen, so you have to toggle open little sections and do that. So here we're seeing the storage section, and again, we're adding a new disk. Uh, and like, uh, like the other providers, it has its own types of disks. So here we're just doing a standard pers persistent disk. So that's, okay. that's kind of the summary of GCP. Thank you, Neil. And Neil has, uh, has graciously uh, been blazing the trail for our team on GCP, so it's kind of fun. Some things to watch out for. Everybody wants to know, oh my gosh, I can screw it up and I don't want to. So here's some things that you should do to avoid screw-ups, only because um, we've run into these so many times ourselves and customers working with them. Uh, make sure that your sizing is appropriate. Don't under-memory uh, your SUSE manager. And using the memory-optimized instances in, in both, uh, in any of the clouds that you use is going to help a lot, especially on database queries, which SUSE manager uh, runs PostgreSQL, so it's doing database things, right? Adding the storage for PostgreSQL, so when you create that additional disk and you add the storage with that storage script, um, it's not supposed to require a reinstall of PostgreSQL, but we have seen that, that if you do all your database things first and then you go, oh my gosh, I forgot to add storage, um, you want to do the PostgreSQL stuff ahead of the SUSE manager setup itself, so make sure you do that. Um, swap file is going to get created as a part of SUSE Manager by default in the in the public cloud. Our images do not have swap. It will create a file, and you want that file to be on cached disk. So your root disk should be really fast. So you saw when I was creating on uh, on the Amazon side, it was actually NVMe. So that's pretty fast disk. Um, you, host name and DNS. This is a bugaboo for SUSE Manager, regardless of where you run it. Uh, but in the public cloud, it's even worse because the DNS assignment will not work. It will simply be too long, and your clients won't be able to resolve to it. And if you don't fix this before you install SUSE Manager, you're going to be doing it over again. So um, here's the two things you need to do. This is proven magic to work on SUSE Manager 4. Use hostname CTL, set dash hostname, and then your fully qualified domain name, the hostname and the domain and name, all that. You create one line in Etsy hosts for the IP v4 address of your SUSE Manager server. Do not use 127.0.0.1, I recommend using the private IP address or the public if it's permanently assigned, but if you it's not if it's dynamically assigned, uh, that's not good. You want one that's going to persist in here. Put the FQDN, then a space, and then the short host name. If you don't do it this way, you will have trouble. If you do it this way, you won't have trouble. Make sure you register it first. You can use YAS or SUSE Connect to register and make sure that you follow the documentation to add the public cloud module to that. Um, make and sure you all... The, oh, yeah. uh, the, uh, remember that the images are, are fully installed with, uh, with all the bits, but they're not necessarily the latest updates. Correct. So after you register, go ahead and do a zipper up Make sure you have all the latest uh, OS and SUSE Manager updates on there. Yes, and in fact, the image that's out there right now is from February, and it's SUSE Manager 4.0.4, and current is 4.0.5. So before you go doing all the SUSE Manager setup stuff with YAST, SUSE Manager setup, get all the updates so that you got bug fixes and all the other pieces of it. And it probably will have you reboot the system, and then you can validate whether your hostname stuff looks right or not. Um, the script, when you install SUSE Manager itself, checks for lots of different things like the storage capacity, hostname resolution, some of those things to try to prevent trouble. But um, some people 
uh, click through that anyway and still get themselves in trouble. Um, leave an SSH connection to your SUSE manager server for any proxies that you have because the proxy configuration script that runs on a proxy server setup needs SSH access into the SUSE manager server. So make sure you leave that port open. You can screw it down to only be the specific IPs of your proxy server if you want to get that granular, but uh, control it so that at least then they have access. Um, and setting the web UI password. So by default, if you run the command sat who on your SUSE manager server, you will see all the defined users. Sat pass WD space username uh, will allow you to set the password for that user. So you can do that ahead of any kind of web access and then use your own password for it. Uh, the default one is documented out there, um, but I don't recommend leaving it that way. So um, you want me to keep going with this, Neil? I can. Sure. Uh, so <laughs> hybrid and multi-cloud, so uh, make sure that you keep in mind that it isn't free. Uh, egress packets get dinged uh, whenever you go out, uh, packets go out. Packets coming in are, are usually encouraged, but packets going out, uh, not so much. So don't put a SUSE manager server uh, in the cloud if all your systems are on-prem and you're trying to provision them. Uh, you will send many, many packets out from the cloud into your on-prem server, and that's a bad thing. So if you have systems in mixed places, put the SUSE manager server on-prem and proxies in the cloud. Happiness will occur. Uh, also, keep this in mind and traversal across crowd regions sometimes can be expensive. So if you have uh, multiple regions and only one SUSE manager server, put proxies out in the other regions. Um, these are some zero MQ tuning things that we have discovered in the cloud are sometimes necessary to help prevent uh, random disconnects and timeouts. This was initially discovered on Azure and uh, we've used them in other clouds as well. So Neil, you want to explain this? Well, it's kind of an eye chart, so we don't expect you to uh, to be able to read anything, but this is illustrating the ports uh, that SUSE Manager uses. Uh, and really, this is just to sort of reinforce some of the stuff we've already said. Uh, make sure your security groups, uh, depending on whichever CSP you're using, there'll be, it might be different names, network security groups or just security groups. Uh, make sure they're configured to allow the right kind of traffic uh, into the manager server, uh, across uh, into the proxy, and then from the proxy to the server, as well as from your managed systems. And if you're reaching out from uh, from a different, uh, you know, uh, on-premise, uh, wherever your, your uh, console is going to be, make sure that the web uh, ports are open. And then, of course, uh, I don't know if this chart has the monitoring ports on there, so that's another thing that you'll want to be aware not, of. And that will need to be updated because SUSE Manager has now met monitoring. So uh, we have enabled now in SUSE Manager in the public cloud, SUSE Manager monitoring with Prometheus and Grafana. So the SUSE Manager server itself has its own self-monitoring pieces for Java, Apache, uh, PostgreSQL, and the internals like the scheduler of SUSE Manager. Uh, and if you don't open port 9100, it will never be seen by the Prometheus server that's going to collect that data. So it gets monitored, but the monitoring server is another instance to which you will install the Prometheus packages. Um, so we provide all of those packages. They're simple to install with a salt formula. So you go to your system and you go to formulas and select monitoring and a high state applied by salt installs all the necessary ports and opens it up. 
and the same thing with installing a, SUSE, a Prometheus server. If you select Pr Prometheus, it will pre-install the right RPMs with almost all the configuration necessary to make it work. So what does this look like? Let's take a look at uh, monitoring for a SUSE manager server. So SUSE manager monitoring in the public cloud is done with Prometheus and Grafana. So two elements, uh, both simply redeployed from SUSE manager with formulas. First on the server itself, I look for the word monitoring and you can see where it is in the menu. I can type it in the search page. It gives me the elements of the SUSE manager server itself that are exported or monitored with Prometheus. SUSE manager itself is not the Prometheus server. It is a target that is monitored by Prometheus. My individual systems on the SUSE manager server can be monitored simply. All I have to do is select formulas and select Prometheus exporters to be able to monitor my systems. And when it does, it turns on an entitlement and enables the state to be applied that installs the necessary packages. And regardless of where those systems are, what operating system are, they will get those packages installed with them and the system type will be listed as monitoring. There are two different Prometheus configurations that are shipped with SUSE Manager. Uh, one job creates a target for the server itself. So when I look at Prometheus targets, I can see this MGR server that has all the elements of the server. And I see MGR clients, which are all the managed instances of my SUSE Manager server. Um, Prometheus collects the data, but it doesn't make it look pretty. For that, we include Grafana. And in Grafana, I have what are called dashboards. So there are two dashboards we ship with SUSE Manager the client systems, and the SUSE manager server itself. First, let's look at the manager server. This is all the details that we saw were monitored in Prometheus, only in much prettier format. So I can change my date range or time range to be the last 12 hours, or drill it down to be just the last five minutes and see system load, CPU, as well as specialized SUSE manager things like Tomcat, Taskomatic, database operations, things that you would not normally see on a normal exporter like a client exporter. For that, we look at the client systems. And these are all my client systems by host name. You, you can notice that if I want to select only certain ones, I can. Uh, here I have all of them selected. And I have an active alert at the top noting that one of my systems is down. This Ubuntu system shows down in Prometheus. So when I look at Prometheus alerts, you can see I have an instance down here. It feeds this alert into what's called Alert Manager, where I can be notified of any down instances here. And I can set this up to customize and send me an email participate in a Slack chat, or however I wish to be notified from SUSE Manager. But that's SUSE Manager monitoring. And with that, we shall return back to our slides. Neil. So now we get to talk about another new feature in SUSE Manager 4, which is the ability to build container images. So, you know, everyone thinks about container images as being something that you would uh, uh, build and run maybe in your in your uh, on-premise uh, Kubernetes or other Docker type uh, runtime system, but of course every cloud provider has its own Kubernetes environment to run containers in, and we're just showing you here. Okay, what are the different ones uh, for SUSE? Of course, if you have a completely SUSE environment, as we hope you do, you'd be uh, running the CAS platform, and we do ship a Docker registry. Uh, in the uh, in the uh, container module for SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. But if you want to run your containers in Kubernetes on the cloud, you could be doing that in the 
EKS service on, uh, on Amazon or in the AKS service on Azure or the GKE service on, uh, on the Google platform. And each one of those Kubernetes platforms also has its own registry that you can create and, and uh, store your images in. So in Amazon, that's the ECR, the Elastic Container Registry. In Azure, it's the Azure Container Registry. And in Google, they just call it the Container Registry. And so, can you move things back and forth and around between them and expect them to work? They're supposed to. Well, actually, you can because a container is a container no matter where it runs. So that's Whee! one of the beauties. One of the beauties of the container uh, runtime platforms is you build everything you need into that uh, container image, and then it just runs the same no matter where you put it. Awesome. So uh, Susan Manager has the ability to build container images. And now in this demo, we will show you how that's done. See, I have four things I can do. The first thing I'm going to start with is configure my image store. My image store is actually my Docker registry. You can see I have the registry out here in Azure. Here's the URL for my login server for my registry. So I'm going to go to my stores tab and I will create a registry. Actually, I already have one out there already. It's called Azure. I can edit it and just see the details of it. For example, you can see that I've got the URI configured right here. So when I want to build an image, the first thing I have to do is create a profile for that image. So here's a list of uh, the profiles that are already out there. I'm going to create a new one, so I'll click on the Create button. And then I can fill in some fields. I'll give it a label. I'll call it Suzukan Apache 2. It's a Docker file. This is the same set of functionality you would use for Kiwi, uh, but we're doing Docker here. I should tell it where to store that image when it's done. That's my Azure uh, uh, image store that we just looked at. And then how am I going to build this? I need a, uh, a Docker file to build it from. So I've got a Docker file right out here in GitHub. There's my Docker file. It's pretty simple. All it's going to do is take the SLES 12 SP4 image from the SUSE registry, add a certificate, add a repository, add some packages, specifically Apache, uh, and then when it runs, start the Apache web server. And then the fi final thing I need to do is just like when I'm building a server, I need to give it an activation key that tells it that it's going to get its packages from SUSE Manager from the SLES 12 SP4 channel inside SUSE Manager. Click on Create, and that will create the profile. Now I want to build an image from that profile. So I'll find it right here, SUSECON Apache 2. Click on the gear icon to start the build. So it's already filled in this field uh, with the right image. Uh, I'm going to use the latest version that's in the uh, I'm going to tag it with the latest version. I'm going to pick a build host. This is a host that's under the control of SUSE Manager that has all the right packages installed. It's used salt to configure that host. And then I'm just going to click build. Now that build has been scheduled and that'll take a little time. So I'm going to click on that link and we will see here it is. Here's the image being built. I can view the details of it and say the build is queued. So I'm going to skip ahead in the demo because that can take a little while. Okay, it's been about enough time, so let's refresh this page, and we'll see that the build is successful. And if we wanted to, we could click on this link and see the results in the uh, in the salt uh, log. You'll see that there was a Docker build right here, and then there was a Docker login right here, and then finally a Docker push, which is what pushed it out to the registry out in Azure, and then. If you look again over here, you'll see the last thing that's been scheduled is a Docker, or excuse me, a uh, image inspect. Uh, and that inspect is in progress. When that inspect is done, if we go back to the image list, we should see that the uh, image needs updates. And we can apply those updates using SUSE Manager just like we did with the uh, any image or any uh, server. You can scan it. Uh, using the CVE audit, or you, if you know what patches need to be applied, you can just apply those patches directly. And so that was how you uh, build container images and stick them into a cloud-based repository or a cloud-based registry. So pretty cool stuff.
Uh, one of the things that you want to do uh, often is match up your subscription, and particularly for BYOS instances. Uh, but uh, on top of that, for the lifecycle management client that you need to be able to uh, connect systems to SUSE Manager, that is BYOS also. So we now have the ability for you to not only support VMware and other hypervisors, but actually gathering virtual instances uh, from the public cloud. So there is a virtual host gatherer lib cloud package for you to install on SUSE Manager. Um, and this is sort of like the uh, Surgeon General warning here. Uh, it may lead to unexpected <laughs> results. If you commingle on-demand and BYOS instance, instance types, it could get very confused. Remember, this is, uh, this is what I call being actively developed. So we are working on improving this functionality as additional uh, SUSE Manager versions are released. But that's good subscription manager yes. matching is a is a feature that's out there, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's act. It, so if you find something that isn't the way it's supposed to be, please let us know because we want the features that are going to help you to be able to align what you have purchased from SUSE with what you need, and particularly in a Google Cloud and a cloud public cloud platform where you have a large number of instances and sometimes they're very dynamic and our client for SUSE manager for both monitoring and um, lifecycle management is a BYOS license so you have to build enough in there to accommodate potentially what you're going to run in the cloud and then true up at the next subscription time. What do you want next? Uh, topology awareness, uh, is that something that you really want to be able to see or, or develop? These are some ideas that we've uh, considered in terms of SUSE Manager and the public cloud. Uh, virtualization hosts and cloud init awareness. So right now when you look at a system detail in SUSE Manager, it doesn't pull any of the grain information or, or, or basic information that cloud init provides. So um, some of the things that are very specific to it, it doesn't really tell you I'm a cloud instance. Hey, I'm a cloud instance. My network is configured with cloud init or it doesn't have other nice uh, cloud init things like the elastic IPs, for example, that you might assign to it. Uh, we don't really see that. Uh, bare metal provisioning in the cloud. I know each of those public cloud providers has its own provisioning utilities. Uh, would it help you if SUSE Manager's provisioning could integrate with that? And then automatic onboarding so that then when a system is uh, built within your specifically defined cloud a virtual private cloud, for example, in, in terms of Amazon, do you want it to automatically uh, assign itself to SUSE Manager? Or what else do you want to see next? Please give us feedback on that because we want to make it an effective tool. There's a number of resources here that you can find uh, SUSE Manager's documentation. While it does not have specific headers for public cloud, there is a ton of content out there. So when you go out to the documentation, just type in the word public cloud in there and you'll see lots and lots of uh, references. Uh, David Rocha, who is one of our uh, pre-sales engineering persons for, or he's on the alliances, isn't he, for, for Amazon specifically, but uh, he's got a blog where he has uh, a number of things, including this one about uh, setting up SUSE Manager. Um, there's a nice uh, set of documentation on some of the monitoring stuff that we showed you today. And then, of course, subscription matching. As we mentioned, there's a, there's a, a direct link to that reference here. If you have questions that you would like to ask, uh, I'm sure there's facility within uh, the tool that you're using to watch this. Make sure that you uh, capture the email addresses for Neil and myself on the screen as uh, the first one did. And uh, thank you so much for attending.
SUSACON 20.